Today's question, 12 premium golf balls or 100 value golf balls? To be fair, in my defense, I thought that was gonna look a lot better. <laughs> Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon down here at Burford Golf Lab. The biggest question I always get is, Simon, what's a good value golf ball? Simon, what golf ball should I use? Simon, how do I stop losing the golf ball? That's a different question altogether. But today we're gonna to talk about the same price for 12 balls. And I know some of you guys say I can get Chrome Soft for 26 99 off. Just humor me, all right? Premium golf balls for about £40 for your Pro V, your Strix and Z Star, your TP5, your Chrome Soft, whatever it might be, versus 100 Lake Balls for the same price. I got these Lake Balls off Amazon Prime for £39. Good value. Let's talk about it. And one thing I should make very clear at the start of this video is that I'm a professional golfer, well let's say professional. I can hit the ball reasonably well and even at my level there are only very minimal changes from golf ball to golf ball. The majority of manufacturers, Titleist, Strix and Callaway will even state themselves between their cheapest ball to their most expensive golf ball. There's not much in it. But obviously if you put a lot of time and invest into the game and spend quite a bit of money on your golf course or your membership or your golf clubs, then you should be getting a golf ball that suits your game. It only makes sense. However, what golf ball should you be using at the stage of your game? Who should be buying the late balls? Who should be buying the premium golf balls? That's what we're gonna look at. Sorry, I forgot to do the shameless plug at the start. So if you wouldn't mind just hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, thanks. So let's talk about it. What I want to know from you guys is, what would you prefer? 12 dozen premium balls or 100 good value, late balls, second hand, whatever you wanna call it. I want to know what you would rather have going forward in the next month. And we're gonna talk about how many balls you lose, how far you hit the golf ball, spin rate, short game, everything that the ball should do on the golf course and where you're gonna benefit most from an expensive ball and where you're not gonna benefit most and you're better off getting a good value cheap ball. Now this video is gonna be very broad and I'm gonna try and basically give you a rule of thumb for every golf ball out on the market. Now obviously that's not gonna be 100% accurate because there's so many blurbs and there's so many descriptions at each manufacturer and I can't get every golf ball and I can't test every golf ball and my swing's not good enough to give you the RPMs and the ball speed and all that kind of data over and over again. However, what I can do is give you a simple guide to choose a golf ball for you. Number one word you need to know today is compression. And the easiest way to know a compression of a golf ball, this isn't always the case, but the compression of a golf ball is the cheaper the ball, the lower compression, the more expensive the ball, the higher the compression. Why no one's ever stated this before, I have no idea. It took me a good seven years into my like golfing career, playing, doing my PJ to actually understand what compression is. And I'm gonna make this very simple. And again, obviously I'm talking very broadly, but softer the compression, i.e. the cheaper the golf ball. Now obviously these are late balls, but they're still the cheaper version of the late balls. They're not, I think there's a few premium ones in there, and we'll get into that in a minute, but they're all relative super softs, DT True Softs, Soft Fills, they're that kind of late ball. So they're gonna be soft compression. And when I say soft compression, that is 80. Do you need to know what 80 means? No. But what you do need to know is the softer the compression, the more the ball's gonna spin, especially with a driver and your irons, which isn't a bad thing, by the way, especially if you don't hit it past 200 yards off the tee. But also softer compression means that ball's gonna disintegrate a lot quicker than a premium ball. Harder compression means that it's gonna last longer as well as off the tee, more importantly, it's going to spin less, i.e. the ball goes further. Let me get into more detail. So you hit the ball 200 yards off the tee. 
Therefore, you should buy soft compression golf balls. Basically, any brand new dozen set of balls, 20 pounds or less. This means that it's gonna give you that spin off the tee to get the ball up in the air. So if you struggle to get the ball high, then get a softer compression ball, it's gonna spin more. As well as your irons are gonna go higher because you might not swing it as fast as other players. Therefore, it's gonna go nicely in the air and land more softly on the green. On the other side of the spectrum, you can hit it 280 plus off the tee. A harder compression ball, your Pro V1, your Z Star, whatever it might be, it's gonna spin less off the tee. Therefore, it's going to go further and not balloon into the air. Cheap ball spins more, harder compression spins less off the tee. General rule of thumb, not blanket statement for everything. However, general rule of thumb. It also means you don't need help getting the ball to stop on the green because you're hitting your 7-iron 160. It means you're hitting your pitching wedge 100 yards. Also, the more expensive the ball, the more layers, they put more technology in trying to get that spin and control around the greens. Again, if you're only hitting at 200 yards and you're hitting a 7-iron 110, for example, no matter what coating you put on that ball, you're not going to be able to check it and stop it back. It just defies the law of physics. General rule of thumb, that's the idea. Soft compression balls, more expensive golf balls, hopefully that makes a bit more sense. So now we understand the spin rate idea between soft compression and high compression. Let's talk about it breaking, splitting, busting open. A super soft in here will last about 100 hits before it basically splits and cracks straight open. Whereas a Pro V, 500 hits in here and you barely see a blemish on it. Now, if you're using super softs and you're starting the game or you need late balls, for example, how long are you actually holding on to that golf ball for? You're probably not getting 100 hits out of it. Whereas if you're buying a Pro V, make sure you're at least getting a round, if not two rounds out of that golf ball. Otherwise, it just doesn't work in terms of the value. You're better off getting a slightly cheaper ball, still relatively high compression, and this is where the middle range balls are, like your AD33, NXT Tour, you name it. That's where those value golf balls come from. So bear in mind that again, there's very little difference in terms of spin rate, launch numbers, ball speeds from the cheapest ball to the most expensive. Look how many times you're actually losing a golf ball around and then try and work out what ball should suit you better. Another thing to note as well is that I live in England and it's coming into winter. Therefore, realistically, do I need a Pro V1 to go and play golf? No, are the greens gonna be very wet? Yes, are the greens gonna be frozen over soon? Yes, are we gonna be on temporaries? Probably. Therefore, do I need a very expensive golf ball to go and play golf with? No. Buy a cheap value golf ball, practice through the winter, you're gonna lose loads of them, they're gonna plug, they're gonna go everywhere. So therefore, again, the idea between a more value brand versus a premium golf ball where you wanna play in club champs, you gotta weigh that up. Now taking everything into consideration, should you now change your favorite golf ball that you play very well with? No. Take what I say with a pinch of salt because I play with guys of very low handicaps. For example, four, hit the ball a mile. I played with one guy that couldn't play with anything but a Swixon's Lady soft feel. Confidence, the mental side of the game is more important than any numbers, any data. Therefore, if you find a ball that you like the look of, like the feel of, and for whatever reason you're starting to play good golf with it, then by all means keep using that golf ball. All I want to do is highlight the highs and lows of a cheap ball versus an expensive ball so you can make a more educated guess if you did want to change. Okay, quality test. Let's have a look what we've got in the box. Well, I need to put them back in the box. But once they're back in the box, let's have a look at what we got. What's the condition like? Um, and what golf balls did we get in the value box? Okay, so I've got all these golf balls for 40 pounds and there's a hundred of them exactly. I probably lost a few when I dumped them out of the box. However, they're all gonna be basically your super soft. So there's Warbirds, there's Big Berthas, some of the older the normal, some of them actually a bit newer, so it depends. I did have a Chrome Soft, but I have no idea where it is. But when I first opened the box, there was a Chrome Soft in there somewhere. But I mean, general rule, you're gonna get the value that you pay for. You can obviously get premium like Pro V1 late balls, for example. But overall, they look clean. The coating's not worn, so it obviously hasn't hit many trees, and the majority of these just look like lake balls. Some of them are more discolored than others. 
Again, I'd have to do more testing to know whether they actually make any difference um, uh, in terms of compression and spin and ball speed. And that's definitely a video we can do. But overall, again, this is like your super soft. And I'm pretty sure the Hex or the HX, they're the more premium balls. Um, uh, so again, you're going to get a rough mix. But as I said, if you're just beginning the game, this is the way forward compared to that. And then as you get better throughout whether you still go use late balls or you go new balls but soft compression for example these ones or you need to go down the higher compression route that's something that obviously you need to have a look at okay so i'm gonna hit three seven irons to try and prove my point warbird which i'm pretty sure was a cheap value golf ball against a chrome soft and i'm gonna swing them i'm trying to go pitch my seven iron at about 100 yards to kind of prove what i'm saying let's do it Tell you what, that's actually pretty accurate. The first one was a bit soft. Last two were pretty much on the button. There's the numbers there, which I'll show you. So five and a half thousand, 60 miles an hour clubhead speed. My monitor doesn't measure clubhead speed, but works on ball speed. Um, so I'm going to try and do exactly the same now with the Chrome Soft. Let's look at the numbers. Okay, so there we go. That's as accurate as I potentially could get hitting a 100-yard 7-iron. Now, the reason the Super Soft was better, you saw literally the ball going high. Now, the launch angle was this pretty much the same, 0.6 on average between the two of them. So, in terms of launch angle, I wasn't trying to hit it low or hit any higher or, or hit it any faster. I hit the Chrome Soft slightly well, actually, on average, I did, oh no, the first one of the cheap one, I should say, was actually a bit low. So I probably should take that out. But I hit the super soft or the soft compression ball slightly harder. Now, I could have just swung the club faster. As I say, my 100-yard 7-iron pitch shot isn't um, my strongest part of my game. But, I mean, they're close. I mean, within a couple of miles an hour of each other. And again, I want you to look at the data. There's not a massive amount between the both of them. But there is a difference. So, again, we look at the expensive ball. It spins less from that distance with a 7-iron from 100 yards. Whereas if I had done that with um, a, a super soft, or if I would hit that from 160 yards, it's going to spin more and it's going to stop, obviously. And it's finding that right level of ball for your club head speed. That's all I'm trying to say. 5,600, you saw a higher ball flight with the cheaper ball. So even though you might feel it feels cheaper and it feels like a rock or a pebble, whatever you might want to call it, it's actually going to give you more of a chance of carrying that bunker. It's going to give you more of a chance of stopping it on the green when it lands and you're getting more carry out of it. Whereas again, with the expensive ball, lower ball flight purely because that spin is... I think the main thing you should take away is don't base your golf ball on your drives. Because the expensive ball, because of the lower spin rate, is always going to go further as long as you launch it high. However, that's 14 to 16 shots for the entire round of your game. Therefore, base your ball on your short game your wedge game and your mid irons if you hit 100 yards seven iron i've just shown you even with a late ball that's been sitting in water for two years it's actually going to perform slightly better for you than an expensive ball if you swing it fast then let's be honest you're going to get something out of it however we're still talking fine margins we're talking 600 700 revs of backspin we're talking another couple of yards of carry Again, pick a ball that suits your whole game, not just your long game. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching. I made it quite brief. I made it very broad. If you have any questions, please leave them down below or any suggestions you want to see in the future in terms of ball testing. But yeah, I think I got that all off my chest. I hope that made sense. See you guys later.